Good evening everybody, I am the Cynic, and this video will be pertaining to the female victim slash woman child. Women love to be victims, despite what feminists, both capital F and lowercase f, and their ilk will espouse, women despise the role of responsibility outside of what they want it to be, aka equality upon convenience. I should say most women. Think about the so-called... <laughs> quote-unquote, war on women for a moment. Instead of thinking that the abortion debate is about the life of the unborn child, women will make it about themselves. The slogan, my body, my choice, being the most prominent catchphrase in regards to women's role in abortion. However, the responsibility of that phrase completely eludes them. Her body, her choice, her responsibility. The common deflection is that it takes two to tango to cultivate a child, as if this is the grandiose argument that absolves them of the fact that they now carry the child and control whether or not it's born. Yes, it does take two to tango, but remember, ladies, only one can determine what happens after the dance is over and the lights go out. Now, keep in mind, whether you are pro or anti-abortion is irrelevant here. This isn't really about abortion as an issue, but about women taking responsibility for their actions or lack thereof. With the multitudes of contraceptives that women have, 17 plus at their disposal, an unwanted pregnancy shouldn't be a thing. Men have only condoms, a vasectomy, and abstinence. And condoms are, I think it's about 95% effective. Tom Likas had a caller in about abortion, who continually argued in circles about how it takes two to make a child, avoiding that the woman, the women are the ones who can abort it, until he finally cut her off. An excellent demonstration of the ability of most women today to apply logic and their own responsibility to such a situation. I'm sure you all remember this quote-unquote war on women really picked up heavily when Rush Limbaugh called Sandra Fluke a slut because she wanted her birth control given to her by her employers because she quote-unquote couldn't afford it. She couldn't afford it. So instead of, oh shit, what do women call these days about men? Oh yeah, womaning up and taking care of her own business, she ran and complained to the government to make us, the U.S. taxpayer, pay for her instead. I should say employers, but that, no. It would come at taxpayer expense to try and force the employers to do that, and no, no. Why? Because she's a victim. She and all the woman children of the West like her are victims of the world around them. Nothing more. The dreaded patriarchy, I think they call it. And how did it go? Rush lost a great deal of his supporters and slut walks began. Now understand that I have no love for Rush Limbaugh, nor his perpetuating of the false left-right paradigm. But his example gives extremely important insight into feminine female groupthink. Somehow, in him calling Fluke a slut, he called all women sluts and propagated the quote-unquote war on women because he didn't want to spend taxpayer money on her contraceptives or forcing her employers to give her contraceptives. Why? Because apparently, women can't afford the contraceptives themselves even though there are, there are places where it's sold at a very cheap price, but that doesn't quite fit the poor, victimized women narrative. The idea that the whole ordeal is that while these women complain about how hard the world is on them and how they need government intervention and being handled with kitty gloves, they will simultaneously espouse equality in both rank and stature with men in society, as if they're to be taken seriously after such demands for preferential treatment. If you're confused, allow me to clarify it for you. These women want to be the thought police. Instead of making themselves better <clears throat> and proving to the world that they want change by being the change, they try to force their change down society's throat via government legislation to try to change the world so that their vision of things becomes the reality. And as anyone who with a brain will tell you, such forced change doesn't garner respect of any kind. It only accumulates resentment and begrudging acceptance. But the over overly victimized woman can't see that. She doesn't care to earn respect or prove herself to her peers. The victimized woman child is only interested in getting her way and crying and moaning should the changes she think needed fail to come to fruition. And if you call the woman child 
<clears throat> on her emotionally driven bullshit, it's a proverbial buffet of shaming language, deflection, ad hominems, and even more emotionally driven bullshit. Now, why are women allowed to get away with this? After all, if men were to use such shaming language and bullshit arguments with other men, we'd quirk our brow, chuckle, and call the guy a batshit crazy idiot before walking away to discuss the issue like adults. The answer is quite simple. Men don't take women seriously, n seriously, nor respect them in terms of equality, yet see women as our sole source of intimacy and reproduction. A guy trying to be inti intimate with another guy is gay, right? After all, intimacy is just another word for sex. That was sarcasm, of course, but men generally experience intimacy through sex. And while this isn't the only way, it is the most common and often the only one many men know of. With a lack of being taken seriously, but needed for intimacy, women's demands are given into without fear of negative consequence, but hope for appeasement respectively. And to solidify their inferior status, if you try to offer men's issues forward to show that men can be just as much a victim of societal expectations, you'll see a contest of trivialization and who's the biggest victim come forth. Men suffer from higher suicide rates? Well, women attempt suicide more. Men are falsely accused of rape? Well, women are raped more. Men are the majority of homeless? Well, men make up the rich and politicians more. You see, these women's victim and woman-child mentality isn't to be questioned. Men are the oppressors and women are the oppressed. It doesn't matter if the majority of men aren't rich or in politics, the fact that a small minority of men is enough to label all men as privileged. Now, am I saying that women don't have real issues that need to be addressed? No, I'm not. But going and crying to the government is the worst way to go about fixing these issues. I don't respect people who expect others to take care of them aside from children, the mentally challenged, and the elderly. I've lost patience for the victimhood mentality of these men and women who don't minimize their chances of bad things happening and expect others to give them pity and protection should such things occur, while shaming and insulting those who expect them to be responsible for taking care of themselves and their wanted own. Wanted being the key word there. It's quite simple to determine a woman child slash victimized woman from, to reverse it again, a <laughs> real woman. The woman child is a loser. The real woman is not. And one of the easiest ways to spot a loser woman is if she's a single mother, not including being a widow. That is important. Instead of withholding her sexual urges to fuck the player or alpha man at the time and save her sexual desires for a man that she could foster a decent relationship with, the loser will allow sexual desire to overtake her logical components and let the seed of the male loser inside and fertilize her egg. Now, she's a loser for fucking a loser and getting pregnant. Not yet has she become a woman child, though. Should she decide to abort the pregnancy and act responsibly in terms of whom she wants to mother children for, she is redeemable. However, should she decide to keep the baby of a man whom she should know isn't going to stick around and only hope he does, thinking she can <laughs> change him, does she become the biggest loser of all? Be he either that thug in the club who's getting all the females' attention and sells drugs to have cash, or the good-looking manager who slept with half his co-workers and subordinates with a track record of never calling them back, a loser isn't defined by his work status, but his character, honor, integrity, and respect, or lack thereof. Why is she the biggest loser of all, though? Because she'll expect him to stick around for the child when she knew damn well that he was anything but a father or a provider. If at any point the father says, I don't want this baby, or hints at it, chances are he isn't going to be around in the child's life. But yet again, this isn't about the child. This is about the mother and her wants and her needs. If it were about the child, she'd abort it without a second thought, unless she doesn't care that the father won't be around. But seeing as the woman child cares for nothing but seeing her own wants and desires met, the child will continue on with her hoping on his, her life, that he she, or she will convince the father to stay. What's saddest of all is that a high majority of these woman children will claim that they thought they knew the would-be father enough to be confident in 
in mothering his children after a very short relationship, some as brief as a one-night stand. Any who hold religious beliefs against abortion are even bigger losers because they open themselves up to getting pregnant and blaming the man f- for her keeping the child when she should have been smart enough to know that the man she was sleeping with wouldn't be in the child's life. And if he was, he wouldn't be a good influence, thus solidifying her status as a poor judging single mother. And that doesn't count if she walks away from the father, taking his assets with her for whatever reason, be it boredom or uh, unsatisfaction or whatever. But this isn't the only kind of female loser. <clears throat> Women who complain about anything to the state in hopes of legis- that legislation will fix it are the epitome of woman children. Instead of taking responsibility for the fact we live in a dark, cold, and cruel world, the woman child will whine, piss, and moan for protection and provision. To conclude, the woman child has become a very prevalent being in the modern Western society. Women are even encouraged and praised to be her. Characteristics include lack of ability to take responsibility for her own life, believing others should protect and provide for her, and blaming others for her own problems. A dead giveaway is if if she's a single mother whose husband hasn't passed away. That last part is very important to remember. Perhaps you agree, perhaps you don't. All I offer is a different perspective. I am the Cynic, everybody. Have a nice day.